This episode of the Off-Road Podcast is sponsored by Warren, Medical Gear Outfitters, and Colby Valve. Off-Road Podcast, episode 350, Trail Repair Tools. Tonight, Andy looks for a parasite. Aaron is hung out to dry. Ben flees the state. And Coy freaks out. Insert music that I can't play right now. Welcome to the Off-Road Podcast, a podcast about everything off-roading. We cover the news, review products, and interview people in the off-road industry. Your hosts tonight are Coy, uh, Andy, there we are, and my name is A.A. Ron. Happy 4x4 day, guys. Welcome to the show. The Weekend Review is brought to you by Medical Gear Outfitters. What are you waiting for? Are you waiting to have a casualty on the trail? Check out MedicalGearOutfitters.com to get straightened out. Medical Gear Outfitters has everything you need, whether you're going out for the day or traveling on a year-long expedition. Head over there to get off-road specific kits that meet all of your needs. And while you're there, make sure you use Off-Road Podcast for 10% off. All right. Um, we got Bubba in the comments from Iron Man 4x4. That's exciting. And we lost Koi in the transition. Oh, boy. He's really he's really freaking out. <laughs> <laughs> um, Andy, let's start with you. What have you been up to in the past week? Um, oh, what's boy. this? What's this parasite you're looking for? Yeah, it's not something I caught in Mexico a couple weeks ago, thank God. But um, yeah. So, uh, I came out to, uh, one of my four wheel drives, uh, now for the third time and, uh, went to unlock it and the doors wouldn't unlock. And I went, Oh no, sure enough, the batteries that's plural because it's got a dual battery setup were drained. Uh, the thing had drained itself now for the third time. At first I thought the bat was the batteries. Um, but unfortunately it's, not the batteries. Uh, so I've been chasing down some sort of parasitic drain, uh, got the old multimeter out on there and have been checking for parasitic amp draw of which there is about mm, four times, three to four times the amount there should be right now. So, uh, yeah, I'm started. I started pulling fuses to see which circuit it's on, but weather started getting nasty and it was running out of daylight and I'm just like, I'm done. I'll do this later, but it's the joys of chasing electrical gremlins. So the good news is it doesn't seem to be doing it when I've got the accessories like the winch, the lights, the heater, uh, diesel heater, all these things hooked up. So I think it's probably not one of the, my aftermarket accessories. It's probably just wiring from 1991. So um eric says uh, he's gonna hang out on the show until he gets a nor another tornado siren oh boy I don't, know why you, I don't know why you can't keep listening if there's a tornado siren like does your internet go down i don't understand I'm confused but whatever and i also like brent here says that koi is a trail repair tool <laughs> i'm a tool <laughs> i'm a tool anyways but yeah uh brent says phantom drain electrical disconnect switch fix will fix your problem this is, uh, I'll tell you what, I'm going to pull the fuses. And if I can figure out where it is, great. If not, we're putting the disconnects on there. So, or just drive, just drive your vehicle regularly. Your, uh, is yours yes. new enough that the locks take electricity to unlock? So, yes, but no. It's, uh, it doesn't have keyless, but it does have, like, as long as you unlock one side, they'll all... Luckily, there's only one other door. But, uh, well, there's actually two other doors, but, uh, uh, there's no ECU on this thing. It's mechanical and diesel injected. Um, the only electronic, uh, like computer it's got is a diesel, uh, it's a glow plug timer. It's something that would probably fit on the head of a pin now and is the size of a lunchbox from 1991. So, uh, granted a small lunchbox, but a lunchbox, maybe it's the size of a, how about a, a disc man, box. a disc man. So, uh, since we're talking nineties, but, uh, uh, I'm not sure it just happened all of a sudden about, I don't know, four months ago, I think it happened. I thought, Oh, I left the light on what a dummy. And I discharged two Optima batteries. So I put them back on a charger, charged them back up, put it back in. It happened again. I thought, well, it's gotta be the, op you know, 
got to be the Optima. So we did a warranty claim with Optima. They sent us two new batteries. Now it happened again. Luckily, they're deep cell batteries. I can bring them back from the brink of death from five volts. So, but um, we'll see. Gotta love it. I don't know why I do this to myself. Um, there's somebody in the comments that says, did you miss me? I don't know who this person is, so I don't know if I can miss you or not. So whatever. Not worried. That's the uh, Timothy. Yeah, I know that's Tim. I'm trying to okay. try to throw some shade his direction. <clears throat> and he's asking if Andy is uh, taking Jeremy's place officially. And if so, are you getting paid the same amount? we gave? Pretty sure Jeremy? I'm getting paid the same amount as Jeremy. <laughs> yeah, even without replacing him. <laughs> uh Yes. In fact, I, uh, in, in theory, I'm paying to be here. Actually, my company's paying to be here. But <laughs> that's, there you go. Yeah, it's, it's an honor. Well, Coy, how about you? What have you done this week? Nothing real exciting. My wife signed up both my kids up for baseball. Conveniently, their practices are only on the nights she works. <clears throat> so, <laughs> it's awesome. And uh, oh no, no, it gets better. It gets much better. Much better. So the annual FJ Cruiser Dunes run was Saturday this this last weekend. Um, Turns out when you have kids in sports, sometimes they're just like, hey, we have a mandatory cleanup day. Y'all got to come down to the baseball fields and do this. Which landed on the FJ Cruiser Dunes run weekend. Don't worry, it's only been been canceled for like two years because of COVID. So (laughs) this is the first year back um saturday morning i'm getting ready to go my wife's like oh i have a baby shower to go to so if you want to go down there with them and hit that up and i was like yes this is exactly what i wanted to do and as i was loading up like a weed eater and stuff she's like oh they said no power tools and i was like oh that's lame i i'm not a no power tool kind of guy (laughs) what so i i get there and uh immediately i see a side-by-side couple atvs seven tractors a skid steer and a front end loader uh all people brought themselves so but apparently my weed eater was too much yeah wow yeah so it was great great nice. weekend then i came home did some plumbing <laughs> and i had to run to home depot and get some pec fittings and this this person whoever you are out there that does this please please this is my freak out part Go play in traffic with a blindfold on because you have done this to me so many times. Mm. I go there. I need a one inch to one inch brass. Let me get it. I reach in the the box. I pull it out. I'm like, yes, I need four of these. And I reach in and I grab three more, put them in my cart. I go home. When I get home, (laughs) as I open them, two of them, are not one inch to one inch they're one inch to three quarters because somebody was like look at these and just throw them back in the wrong box please kill yourself if you're the person at home depot or hardware stores or anywhere else doing that put it back in the right box so that when i grab parts i don't have to make a 30 mile drive back to home depot hey Aaron, have you thought about approaching xanax for a sponsorship (laughs) i thought home depot was only like Eight miles from you. It, it probably is. But I was making it good. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Like, so, they must have closed that make one. Those Xanax and good. chewable. Then I'm in. <laughs> if it's gummy, then buy me a case. I'll go in on halfsies with you on that. So. Oh man, I guess we're making a Costco run after this for some Xanax. So yeah, great weekend on my half. I was the happiest I've been in a long time. I definitely wasn't airable. Didn't cause any fights. <laughs> <laughs> it was a smooth sailing. Uh, sure, I was a pleasure to be around. What about you, though, Aaron? How I'm well, I'm curious. How did the baby shower go? <laughs> oh, I, I don't know. I, I guess babies were falling from the sky. I don't, I don't really know what happens at baby showers. Oh, ouch! Tim says if you would have QC'd your stuff before you left, you wouldn't have had that problem, Coy. Oh, you're, respons- you're responsible for your own actions. I, I should internalize it. But I'm sorry that I didn't take responsibility for everyone else's horrible <laughs> actions. <laughs> I just assume that everyone out there is a semi decent human being. That's my fault. Yeah. Kumbaya. Well, yeah. I've been 
burned by that. Or I thought you were going to say you got home and you opened the package and there was a used part in there because that's happened to me on a couple of occasions. I would have happily taken a used part if it fit. (laughs) Someone wants to know if you played any games at the baby shower. I don't think Koi was at the baby shower. (laughs) Koi was uh, very busy uh, with a rake or something. I don't know what you were doing. Oh, we're loading up sod. They, they cut into new baseball time. And oh, that's what you do on a maintenance day. It's like, hey, all the parents come here and make two new baseball fields. Because, yeah, you don't, wow. it's not like they don't pay taxes or anything like that. So I just I, no. can't, like, <laughs> can't you, like, just pay to be on the team and that money cover stuff? <clears throat> I actually told my wife, I will happily pay extra to not go like mm-hmm. if it's <laughs> mandatory could i buy my way out of it but apparently yeah. that wasn't an option when my daughter was in kindergarten uh no preschool when she was in preschool we sent her to a private school and uh it turns out that it was a requirement that the parents had to do i think it was 10 hours of um wh- whatever they call it Community um, service. Basically like community service. Yeah. And they have different events that the school puts on. And so of course I was like you, Coy, and I had to uh, run the show for those things. And I um, went to some barbecue and alcohol event in a parking lot somewhere. And I handed out tickets to people. That was one of them. I can't remember what the other one was, but literally if you don't go, they fine you money. And it was like big money. <laughs> Oh, they find you. I'm totally okay with that. No, it My was Saturday like it's worth quite a bit of money to me. So, <laughs> like five hundred dollars. Wow, five hundred bucks. I think it was five hundred bucks, and then I would yeah. pay it, but I would shoplift something from the school. Like I would take a copier home. So, make it equal. <laughs> yeah, they had some pretty strict rules. So, anyways, well. Uh, so it sounds like you didn't really do anything in the off-roading world over the last week, apparently. No, no, not unless. unless well, I take it back. You did you did go overlanding? You did go overlanding at Home Depot, so I twice. did, and then I went to Taco Bell to try and pound down my woes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Taco Bell comfort food. It's not the only place where you can still get gas for a dollar thirty-five. So that's it, right there. Boom. Yep, but um. They got cheesy fries. It's mind blowing. Yeah. So uh, last week I talked about the uh, the tires I'm putting on my Avalon. So here's a picture of before. Here's a picture of after. Look at those beefcake oh. all terrains. Oh man, there's gonna be so many sweet jumps. And, the, <laughs> and the, you know those things where they're like, and they say you can't hear a picture. I can hear this picture. <laughs> <laughs> what what noise do you hear when you hear this picture? Every time you hit a bump or turn, <laughs> that's really flat. That's flat. I can hear. Are you saying? My, are you saying that that's going to rub on my on the fender uh, liner, the Only inner if fender liner? Car moves. Self <laughs> <laughs> self clearancing fender liners. So oh man. So I I tried. I looked at the back koi where it was rubbing and it was rubbing too much for me to notch so i ended up um i found some lug nuts that were the exact same thread pitch and they were like the mini acorn style ones that didn't have any flares or anything so i put five acorn lug nuts that were five eighths of an inch thick and i pushed the wheel on and it cleared everything in the back so um i bought myself some three quarter inch wheel spacers amazon's like yep we have these in stock and they'll be there in one day so I put the order in, and as soon as I put the order in, it said it'll be there in two days. Two days. Two, day, two days will be today. Um, and um, <laughs> Tim wants to know if the Avalon will beat his RTI score for the pilot. Uh, over the weekend, Tim was at an off-road event with his Honda Pilot uh, driving up the RTI ramp. So we'll find out, Tim. My body, my chassis probably has more flex than your chassis. Um, someone wants to know also what's going to last longer, the tire or the inner fender. So, well, the tire is going to last longer because I'm going to get in there with a heat gun and, uh, and push the inner fender in just a little bit more or just remove the inner fender. I don't even know why we have those. They barely protect the back of your headlights anyways. 
Which, yeah. Um, I don't know. Actually, maybe that's a good point. It is a Toyota. It might be throwing water into my intake like it does on all the rest of them if we don't have one. So anyways, yeah, so it's supposed to be here two days, which would be today. I got an email this afternoon saying, well, it might be another one to two more days from Amazon. So I was really hoping they'd be here yesterday because I could have totally installed them and had it ready to go yesterday. And because they got pushed out, I turns out Monday nights I do a podcast, so I couldn't do a Monday night. Tuesday night, I've got something else. Wednesday night, I've got school, so... I'm not going to get them on until this weekend. I'm really bummed by that, but we'll get them there. I'm close. Um, I also bought a uh, tuner for the wife's F-150 oh. to increase fuel economy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Is your wife listening? Yeah, of course. I'm not listening. sure. <laughs> I'm not sure. So we'll talk after the show. <laughs> <laughs> No, for reals, though, um, I talked to Andy from the Horsepower Hour um, bot podcast, and he has this exact same one. And he said that when he doesn't drive it like it's stolen or have it pumped full of E85, he does get two miles a gallon better. So um, def- desperate times call for desperate measures. So and at the price of fuel right now, actually cheap at four dollars a gallon for the price of fuel. And right now we're at four seventy in town here um for gasoline for gasoline if it was at four dollars a gallon it would take essentially ten thousand miles to pay it off so in less than a year this will be paid for if we do really achieve two miles the gallon at the cost of fuel there so Uh, yeah i was just gonna say that's only if you drive it in a way that gets you two miles a gallon better and not in a way where (laughs) you're just yeah. blasting fuel and air into that because you like the sounds and the feel it makes in your seat mm-hmm. what i don't know what you talk about we're gonna get better fuel economy i mean it's her truck she's the one who drives it and she doesn't drive like me so we'll definitely get at least one of those two miles a gallon it might take us two years to pay for yeah, it split the difference yeah uh, brent uh treat yourself uh brent i know has had some fedex woes lately and he says if fedex was delivering it'll be here between 8 a.m and 11 a.m in october so yeah i don't know if Brent ever got what he was expecting I oh i also bought some FedEx. bump stops for the rear of the f-150 as well some timbrin bump stops so mm. the truck squats a little bit when we hook up our 27 foot travel trailer so that's going to help out with that a little bit and then You've i worked on a shop's life truck Yes. Um, Worked on the shop a bit here. You can see in this picture, I got the last of the roof framing done. Um, I'm excited about that. Um, That that portion's finished. Next step is to sheet the roof and then put the roofing on top of the sheeting that I put on the roof. So making some headway. Um, Pretty soon I'll have a roof on it and I can start parking some vehicles undercover. And you can see the mighty Nismo there hooked up to a dump trailer doing uh awesome farm things it says pro that's awesome uh yeah the side it says patch pro on the uh, trail it's my uh brother-in-law's trailer Mm. um so brent says exactly 21 days after it was supposed to arrive apparently they took a nap in memphis i had a part do that where I called them, I was like, hey, is it lost? And they're like, absolutely not. I'm like, oh, it's been in uh, St. Paul for like six days now. And they're like, yeah, it's in that facility. I was like, well, could you just send it to me from that facility? And they're like, yeah, eventually. <laughs> could you send it to me? <laughs> I mean, it'd be nice. Yeah. yeah. So, but they were like, oh, we didn't lose it. I'm like, okay, that's fine. Then just go ahead and move it out of that building and towards my house. But Yeah. And no recourse. Like, there's no, like... No nothing they won't send nothing. You any money or anything yeah nope hey guys we're looking to reach more listeners we're going to start reading apple itunes reviews on air if you hear yours send us a message with your address and we'll send you an off-road podcast sticker you can find all of our social media by just searching our name now go hit that subscribe button
We also want to thank our sponsor, Patriot Patch. Head over to patriotpatch.co and check out their selection of great patches, shirts, cleaning mats, signs, and stickers. You can also join the Patch of the Month Club for 15 bucks and receive a patch, matching sticker, and artist proof each month. Speaking of Patriot Patch, I got my Patch of the Month in, and it is... Uh, it's the one we've been showing. It is uh, the Easter Bunny dressed up like the Mandalorian on a speeder. Um, and also speaking about like postal deliveries, this one came absolutely wrecked. Like my uh, my artist proof card was tweaked and stuff. So a little sad about that. It's not in pristine condition. Like I'm going to keep them and put them in a museum or something. But anyways. Yeah. Let's see here. Oh, one more here. Hang on a second. I'm just so everybody knows here. I'm running all the uh, buttons tonight, so I'm bouncing back and forth. We got one more here. Have tire troubles ever left you deflated? Colby Valve has got you covered. Ever have a valve stem leak? Colby Valve makes reusable and easily replaceable valve stems that don't require you to remove your tire from the wheel. They work with your off-road rig, ATV, side-by-side, -side, commuter vehicle, or even your tractor. Never be left stranded again because of a busted valve stem. They also have a tire repair kit for those punctures that keep you away from doing your favorite thing, wheeling. Make sure to check out colbyvalve.com or ask for them at your local off-road product store. Tim, I agree. My mailman does need bump stops. Um, so this week for our news, we're not going to cover our traditional news we're going to talk about some new products we're going to do some quick product reviews um, that were just launched three days ago so these are all hot new products um, super excited about so koi why don't you kick off the first one here uh the wally panel kit is that how we say that i think so is the wally panel wally? uh it's it's manufactured by built right industries it's spelled like molly but with a w I, so, uh, I'm assuming be, the W is for like a wheel. Yeah. Be the only guy at the mall with a mole, or sorry, with Molly panels on your wheels. Each Wally panel works with all Molly PALS accessories in addition to universal slots for all kinds of storage possibilities. Kit includes one 24 inch panel and none of the required bracketry <laughs> and hardware. Fits all wheels from 12 inch to 22 inch. We use a detailed 3D scan of OEM and aftermarket wheels to ensure that your Wally panel fits safely and securely with only moderate risk of injury or damage to yourself, other pedestrians, and or your vehicle. I love it. I, um, I actually kind of like this product. <laughs> the axe holder is a real nice touch. Yeah. <laughs> this product is a joke, obviously, but... <laughs> For your spare, handy as all get out. That's true. I would run that on my spare. I don't need a backup camera. <laughs> yeah, I do love that axe because I. it's hard to tell from this angle, but I have a feeling that that axe is longer than the tire is in diameter. Considerably, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, our uh, our next one, I don't have any pictures for our next one. Um, but, uh, expedition portal is launching a new app. So, uh, <clears throat> it's called the Lovelander app. If you guys didn't hear about this one. So are you lonely in your rooftop tent in need of a navigator searching for a partner in khaki? The new Lovelander app has shocked the industry with its innovative new features for connecting overland singles. The user can select preferences like vehicle make because everyone knows land rover and land cruiser don't quite fit the color of the max track each oh and the color of the max track each love lander can customize their feed with only the singles they want to meet most the app has also received high praise for its most controversial features like tagging if you are in an underlander or an overlander with rich integrations to popular apps like onyx users can now geolocate their uh love landers actively while they explore because you can never know who you might bump into on the trail uh, darwin yes these are all april fools uh things um and brent the axe would be great for clearing rioters in portland um 
Tim wants to know if FJ Cruisers even have spares. They just call tow trucks. Um, let's see here. How do I delete this comment? I can't even figure out how to delete it. It's stuck I in did, there I, well, I did want to feel more popular, but maybe not. It's a Twitch. Yeah, that's Twitch. So nobody will see that one anyways. <laughs> Uh oh, Eric says he's watching from the bathroom and not because he had Taco Bell. They must be getting some more uh tornado sirens. Um, yeah. Okay, let me uh finish this one up. Sorry, I got uh sidetracked by the comments here. So key questions to the Love Lander app uses to find your next soulmate. Do they wear khaki only or are they open to other colors like green? Are you comfortable with glamping? Does your Tacoma's remaining payload even allow for a date to ride along? <laughs> <laughs> is, this, is the smell of gear oil and aphrodisiac skinny or wide tires did you buy a light bulb before recovery gear does a shemog make you 20 percent more swipeable and if all that isn't enough lovelander will even compare your instagram feed for photos of your truck staged at campsites you didn't actually camp at and each new user receives a complimentary bottle of perfume for aspiring lovelanders called turbo diesel I think you should get on that, Andy, um, before they I've run out of I've got plenty of that already, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so the Lovelander app, it's hilarious. All right, Andy, you got you got one here coming up. All right. Let's see here. Yes, okay. So this is the, uh, this is the, so maybe you, you've heard about it, but earlier in the year, we came out with a product called Hub. That allows you to control your uh, winch using an app on your smartphone. Well, this is the Grub, which uh, allows you to control your winch wirelessly and receive remote taco or pizza delivery. Uh, by the way, you have to choose one. Uh, the leader in vehicle recovery is about to get more delicious. Included introducing the Grub Wireless Winch Controller and drone-supported taco or pizza delivery system. This allows you to control your winch and control your hunger. Pair your Bluetooth device and Grub will operate your winch from within 100 feet. It can also contact the nearest pizza or taco shop within 100 miles. Deliveries must be less than 7 pounds. Freshness not guaranteed. Not responsible for dirt in food. No substitutions. <laughs> I love it. That's a good one. Thank you. Uh, I thought it was rather funny myself, considering I made it. So uh, Darwin wants to know about taco pizza. Will you uh, if it's egg? available, I've told people it's just kind of what comes up. You don't have a whole lot of choice. No substitutions. If they have taco pizza, it might be round table pizza. It could be Domino's. It's just whatever's closest. Gotcha. And uh, I don't oh, know what have it, but go ahead. They should definitely make a pizza taco. Hmm. I guess you just fold a pizza in half, technically. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think no, that, that I would. Is that a calzone? I, I think I need it. Yeah, I have, sort of. Yeah. I mean, I would, yes, absolutely. I'm going to share this uh, worn one from a couple years ago, which Andy mm. introduced me earlier. The yes, Xeon this, 1000. This is the Xeon 100, actually. So it's sorry, the biggest, sorry. biggest worn truck winch ever with a massive size, incredible 100,000 pound pulling capacity and unbelievable 19 stage planetary gear train. The Xeon 100 may cover your headlights, but it'll recover nearly anything. I love it. Yes, that was 2019. Oh, that was good. Here's a couple more in the pictures that uh, Koi sent to me. Um, also the, uh, the new pup up tent. Uh, it's got a uh, rooftop tent just for your dog. Smaller version. And Koi, can you explain this next one to the people who oh. are visually impaired while they're driving <laughs> their vehicles? I, I honestly wish they made this. This is the Kelty 12-man chair stadium. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you've ever seen the two-person side-by-side fold-out chair. Well, it's yes. like that yeah. times six taking a 12-seater. <laughs> This could be my favorite one. It's so just like, it's just so blatant. Like it's, there's no, there's no story. It's, it's just ridiculous. And I love everything about it. Could you yeah, imagine though, you're camping with a big group. I mean, say you're at Moab, you're watching some people do a trail and you just pull that thing out. <laughs> <laughs> just 
<laughs> just God. stretch it out. I just love <laughs> it. How soon before like just random people were like, hey, can I jump in? Like you just have what a great way to meet friends, you know? Oh man. Or you want to watch the parade, but you want to make sure you have your own spot. Just pop that out <laughs> early in the morning. <laughs> Nobody's uh, crowding you. It's just it's just that one chair. Good. It's yeah. longer than a church pew. Yeah, we have. Yep. Brilliant. All right. Yeah, those were good. There was a lot of fun stuff. There was another one by Rough Country where they made their own breakfast cereal called Rough Country Rough Crunchies. Um, and I had the video for that, but I thought if I played it, I might get some copyright infringement. And I was disappointed with that one this year from Rough Country because they usually just like nail it with hilarious well, ones. They, that one was they've set they've medium. set the bar really high. They've set the bar really high. If you hadn't seen those other ones, would you have felt bad with with the Rough Crunchies? I, Crunchies? It, just, it was good, but it was just like you know this is breakfast cereal. But like last year, they had the Bluetooth auto rotating hot dog roaster thing. They had like a full size chicken on it, spinning it at 400 miles an hour over a fire. They did they did the uh, RTI ramp that for like parking and parking lots. Stick on yeah. LED lights. Oh, uh, the stick and on just, winch. The, the fairly with the winch. That that stick was on. that really like set the bar for me. That was hilarious. I found that hilarious, but I seen a guy that actually did that. Just bought a fair lead and like six inches of rope and a hook and stuck it up in there. See, there yeah. are some of these things that you look at and you're like, you know, like that roof nest pup tent thing. They'd probably sell every one they made. I, I believe they would. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Brent says that rough crunchy sounds like something um, from Taco Bell as well. Oof. Yeah. All right. Sounds like Go it. prepared with Warren Industries. They produced the first recreational winch in 1959 and lead the industry with their dedication to quality and reliability. When you dig yourself in deep, make sure you have the right tools to get yourself out. Get Warren equipped and go where others can't. Now, let's get ready for adventure and head into our main topic. I cut you off there, Koi. What were you saying? Oh, it, I said it sounds like your diffs now that you got a V8. Rough, Rough crunchies. crunchies. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. Well, so this week we're talking about trail repair tools. And as you can see, Koi's got his on display behind him. If you're watching live, he's got the whole snap on tool chest that is uh, worth more than probably all of Andy's vehicles combined. <laughs> Accurate. Accurate. Yeah, these are my tool rolls behind me, if that gives you any idea. Whoa, those are some tall tool rolls. Got some problematic vehicles. Yeah. <laughs> you and your uh, um, parasites. Yeah, what is it? Parasites. Parasites. Yeah. parasites. Yeah. Struggling with the English language. So, uh, yeah, so this week we're going to talk about trail repair tools. So like what you're going to bring with you when you go wheeling or camping or overlanding or whatever you're doing. Some people just keep their tools in the rigs all the time and they might be driving to the Home Depot to pick up some picks and they need to do some work on the rig on the way to or from Home Depot. I don't know. But uh, yeah, so we're going to start out with the basic hand tools and uh some of these things we're going to just jump through and some of them have got pictures to share and some of them will talk about them and other ones we we won't spend any time on it like wrenches so here's some here's our first picture you've got wrenches um you've got needle nose pliers you've got some sockets you've got some ratchets um all kinds of stuff going on here you've got a crescent wrench um and some allen keys so those are all basic hand tools that uh that people keep in their bags um uh, this picture's got some more pliers you got vice grips you've got the old slip joint pliers or the bigger ones with the green handles um we'll call those channel locks although i think their official name are like water pump pliers or something like that but nobody knows them by that that i know of except for one person um, you've got some needle nose pliers, cold chisel, pry bar, screwdrivers, all those kind of things in those pictures. 
Um, let's see here. Uh, diagonal cutters. I didn't see any diagonal cutters in there. Um, would you guys see a benefit to bringing diagonal cutters with you? You, you just mean like side cutters? Yeah. Uh, I like to keep a pair of those because I use a lot of zip ties for different things. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's for nice sure. To be able to set those. I, I do keep a pair of side cutters. I keep anyway. a set my tool roll, yeah. For yeah. sure. Uh, and it's really for the for the, the reason Koi says, like, it's cutting the 14,000 zip ties that I've installed on my vehicle somewhere. So Always cut those straight and out of an angle, or you'll somehow cut the daylights out of yourself. <laughs> Turns out they yes. get really sharp. Someone showed me that you could grab a zip tie. Um, if this is the zip tie, you actually grab it with the pliers going down it, and you squeeze on it as close with the pliers as you can and then you just spin your pliers and it will snap and the tip will break and fall inside of the the zippy part so yeah. it can't cut you so they actually make a special pliers that tightens the zip tie and then cuts mm. it if you've ever used mm. them they're awesome i don't own a pair but i've used them for yeah, this week i don't either yeah let's see here what else in the basic hand tools we've got uh, crescent wrench large and small Oh yeah, axle nut sockets in there. Yeah, I skipped over that one. I, I think that's uh, a super important one, especially for us CV shaft guys, because that is a likely one you'll have to replace. Yes, and you absolutely have to have the right size for that axle you, nut, you and it's usually like a thirty-two not. millimeter or something. It's huge. Yeah, the yeah. Mitsubishi ones. The Mitsubishi one is used to be a special a special tool. It was like an axle nut, but instead of having four uh, little teeth on it, it had two. So basically you buy like the, the one for like an F-250 and you grind two of the teeth off. So it's really kind of specialized. So yeah. And I have wow. three of those vehicles and I kind of keep it uh, under lock and key because I have to have it or else uh, I have to go buy another one and grind the teeth off that one. I brought one with me to Moab and we ended up using it. Glad I had it. I keep one in my truck as well. Yeah. yeah. Let's see here, going down the list, pry bars. I've got a picture of that. Big and small pry bars. Those are actually also good for getting CV axles out of your um, front diff or things like that, or trying to leverage something back into place. Um, small ones for tight spots, big ones for large leverages. Uh, cold chisel um, for if you absolutely break down and you think that you're going to just be living there for a long time you can use these to write letters and notes and things in the rock and keep track of how many days you've been there <laughs> i was gonna say i would use these to turn the bolts that i have stripped into flatheads so i can undo them so there you go there you go cut a slot into them I, yes. I like to use them for scraping the copious amounts of dirt and oil and grease off of things so i can see what's broken <laughs> yeah um allen wrenches we talked about allen wrenches here we go here's a picture of them yep gotta have those, those you really do have to have those yep uh torx bits here's a torx bits uh i know jeep uses i think probably everything uses these torx bits nowadays yeah just a, at least one or two just to piss you off it's just that one random bolt somewhere yeah, it's going to be on something like your tailgate stop latch or something like that. Then you're like, I'll never need that. And then, like, for some reason, you're on the trail and your tailgate's falling off. And you're like, God, I finally had that T25 or T55 yep. or whatever. And that's when you find out that the fill hole for your front diff is a Torx. <laughs> yes. Instead of a, like, Instead a 3 8 or something or a 3 yeah. 8 yeah. And it's not even yeah. a really a three eighths. It's that it's actually like that specific square drain plug bit thing. I actually bought, you know, I, oh, on I my Suzuki that I used a... to have, hmm. you know, the three eighths would, would just round it out. So I actually bought the fill plug square. To, and it's like just a tiny, 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 tiny. Anyway, it's like the difference between a, between a Phillips head and a JIS screwdriver. I don't know if you're familiar okay, with that. Yeah. yeah. The Japanese industrial standard one, which the the uh, the points on the end are actually slightly different than a Phillips head. So. Yeah, 
I learned about JIS when I was goofing around with the motorcycle stuff. Yes, very popular in the motorcycle stuff. Uh, I was cha- I did the front brake rotors on a Honda a few weeks back, and uh, I have a uh, impact screwdriver and a JIS, and just bam, and it comes right bam. off. Yeah. Brent says uh, 850 10 mil sockets locked in a mobile safe. <laughs> you know, an, an impact driver is something that I didn't see on here. But now that I think about it, it's probably something that would be smart to carry. I and mean, you can get something yeah. out in a hurry and you got to just smash it with the wham bam yeah. until it starts turning. And they're satisfying every, to use too because you get to just. Not everybody knows shit. what that is. Can one of you explain what a what an impact driver is? And we're not talking about like a cordless impact gun. Oh, it's a uh, it's a large cylinder metallic piece, and then inside of there, there is a usually a you know this I don't, now I don't even know the word for it a socket fitting, and as you hit it, it pushes at an angle and turns that. So you put it over a bolt. Or you could put it over a screwdriver. They're really good for like taking the screws out of a brake rotor. Mm-hmm. And as you hit it, that angled piece turns it maybe an eighth of a turn. So you just start beating on it, and that impact can really work loose some old, corroded, rusted in stuff. Mm-hmm. And usually it takes me about 20 minutes just to figure out which way is in and tighten and loosen. So <laughs> yes. I sit there, click, and the push on it, on it. The click and the push on it. Let's see. Left, right. Uh, and yeah. then I slam. <laughs> oh, no, the other way. Yeah. There we go. I find it. I find the impact driver to be one of those satisfying tools because, you know, if you do it right and you just, you get to slam it and it's like, yeah, this thing works awesome. It's even like, like a torque wrench is another one where you like, you're putting all this in and then like click and like, oh yeah. Okay. Got it. So. I I um, wish that they were satisfying for me, but it's always when I'm like this, this is going to strip. And then I, I'm like <laughs> shaky handing it. Like, please work, please work, please work. <laughs> oh, totally. No, I totally know what Brent, you mean. Brent suggests if we're, you're getting torques, to get the tamper proof Torx one. So the tamper proof ones have a hole down the center of them. So there's some unique, uh, unique fasteners out there. I'll say. Yes. Uh, to finish off this list, we've got a tape measure in case you got to do a, an alignment on the trail or something like that. A uh, razor knife in mm-hmm. case everything goes wrong and you have to <laughs> cut your um, wrist. Yeah. Oh God. Oh, there's so many jokes, but I'm just not going to say them. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and the last last one on this list is the CV axle puller. I don't have a picture of that one either. Can you, can you describe that, Koi, since you put that on the list? So I made my own, but you can buy them. A lot of times they'll be a synthetic, and it's basically just a rope with two loops. So you loop one end around the back of your CV shaft. You stick the hammer handle through the other loop and then you kind of hold your cv shaft and you use that rope to get a run at it with a hammer slam on it and you can pop that shaft out of your diff i made one out of some cable but works the same way but on a lot of vehicles pry bars just don't quite work as good as they could and with one of those i mean you can make them go down to ace hardware and have one make you know make one out of some cable for the eight dollars or something and it will save you a lot of headache. I've never, I've never heard of that, and I've definitely never heard of one somebody making one. What it kind of reminds me of is like those dent pullers or whatever, where you, you, you weld that little rivet point onto a fender, and you, you hook that like slide hammer onto it, and you're using a slide hammer. Kind of sounds like a slide hammer. That's so they what actually, I was thinking. they do make like a if you're in a shop or something, there is a slide hammer version of it, but. The trail version of it is usually th- out of synthetic rope or people make them out of gotcha. cable and stuff. Hmm. I They're... can see that going wrong if your rope was stretchy and like you you slid it and then like slammed backwards and impales your hand onto something. Oh, so you make it like six feet long. So you are outside. You're not doing it oh. under the vehicle. You're like holding the shaft okay. in your hand and then I hitting see. it from clear outside there. Yeah. Gotcha. They're, they're charming. Charming. And to everybody, everybody throwing out comments um, of their ideas. A bunch of these we're going to actually cover here. In uh, we're going to cover in the uh, later in the the show, but we'll we'll uh, we'll mention them as we come through here too. So, 
Um, Koi, why don't you take the electrical one here? So wire strippers, I think that's a must. Some extra wire always here's, doesn't. Here's here's the traditional wire strippers that everybody seems to have. I, mine yes. have yellow handles, so they're totally Same. different. Same. Oh, um, <laughs> totally different. <laughs> totally different. My handles are y'all. Uh, yeah, I have one of those. Uh, you know, extra wire, extra fuses. Also, know what kind of fuses your vehicle takes. Mm. If you got what? an old rig and you need some bus fuses, you you know, they got micro now. So kind of get an idea of what your vehicle takes before you just grab a random extra fuse kit. Uh, and also, if you buy those little fuse kits, they oftentimes come with a fuse puller and a fuse tester and stuff in there. So sometimes it's worth just getting, they'll come in a little almost like fish lucite, you know, tackle box looking deal. And you can have kind of a plethora of those. Wire yep. terminal connectors. I carry a yeah. bunch of these. I don't know that I've ever used one on the trail, but man, I don't know how many times camping somebody's like, oh, my light's out. This isn't working. And I've been like, popped it open and here you go. I think Ben yeah. fixed the charger for his Jackery or something on our snow camping trip. And I just had some extras there. Uh, voltmeter. I don't carry one of those because I'm not good at using them. And I just, ugh, I get sick looking well, at voltmeters. <laughs> I, I don't use it. So I have this exact one. This is the Harbor Freight one. And I got it oh. for free. I think I probably got five or six of them for free at any point you, in my life. You got taken. <laughs> um. And I use it for two things. I use it to check voltage, which you just put the leads in and you touch it to something to see if it's got voltage, or you can use it to check um, continuity. And if you don't have a um, fuse tester, you can check the continuity where you touch one blade and then touch the other blade on a fuse. And if it beeps or makes whatever noise, then you know that the electricity can flow through it. It's got continuity. So you yeah, the, harbor those freight one, the harbor freight one doesn't beep. It just starts smoking. <laughs> yeah, it catches on well, fire. It definitely does when you have it in the wrong setting and you're trying to test household voltage. <sighs> Ask me how I know. Good thing that they're free. I, I oh, will yeah. have to say I, I had the, uh, the $2 harbor freight one. Uh, and eventually it just, it just died. Like so many other electrical things from harbor freight. Uh, and yes. I, I did spend the 45 or $50 on a Klein Tools one. Uh, and it's been great. It's so much easier to use, so much better, all that stuff. So uh, as one who is currently chasing electrical gremlins, I, I can attest to spending a little bit more money on the little bit better voltmeter, and you'll probably Absolutely. be a lot happier. Yeah, so that's my trail one. My, yes. my one in my house is a Craftsman one. My one in my tool bag is a Fluke. Um, oh yeah, and that's, those are those are legit. Yeah. The fluke ones. It's Dude. kind of funny that they have that name, but yes. <laughs> yeah, how what an oxymoron. So, yeah. I think you need like a baseline level of intelligence to use those. So that's why I have a test light. It's, oh, here we go. Know, it looks like a looks like here's yep. a test. Light. Yes, mine's not nearly that nice, but yes, <laughs> yours isn't coil. Mine is not coiled. No. <laughs> And the alligator clip is not nearly as cool looking or durable as that one. But still, God. I have <laughs> yeah. uh, used that mostly for diagnosing uh, trailer issues, but yeah, trailer light stuff. But they're still test lights are are great to have. Gets a and job then, done. Uh, never forget a flashlight. You know yes. what? It is so funny because that is such a it, it's like a should be this basic thing. And so many people forget it and they're out, there, they're out there with their phone or whatever. I don't know. Whoever, whoever invented the modern headlamp, like the kind you wear, I've got like oh, yeah. 16 of them right over here in my junk pile. Yeah. Uh, it, whenever we hit the trail, we always have an LED headlamp with us. They're just a lifesaver. Yeah. And sometimes you can get flashlights for free at Harbor Freight too. <laughs> yeah. They usually last as long as their voltmeters. <laughs> well they're good for one trail run yeah one trail run yeah well andy why don't you talk about fluids yeah sure uh this is something i i uh, <laughs> probably know all too well so uh engine oil that's kind of a no-brainer especially if you own uh an older an older uh leakier rig like i do um so uh whether it's uh engine oil uh 
gear oil, transmission fluid, that kind of stuff. Uh, I generally carry some 15, uh, uh, 15W40 with me, which is what my diesel rigs take. So I usually carry some of that. Um, I also carry some uh, uh, diesel clean uh, for fueling up along the, uh, the, the way. Uh, gear oil, obviously uh, an important thing. Uh, I have a vehicle that currently has a little bit of a leaky axle seal. So bringing a, bringing a thing of uh, 75W90 is not a bad idea. Uh, transmission fluid. All my rigs are automatic, uh, excuse me, are manual transmission, but there's still fluid in that transmission, obviously. So, but uh, making sure you have a, a little bit of that, especially again, if it's an older rig. Coolant, uh, you know, I, I, this is not something I generally carry with me. Uh, you know, water, if I have to, I'll always have some water. Um, uh, brake fluid, again, not generally something I bring with me. I try to, I try to make sure that the brakes are are good before going off road. And if I do need to top it off, that's uh, something I will do. Uh, power steering fluid is another one. Carb cleaner. Um, it's not just for cleaning carbs anymore. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> does it have, does it have health benefits? Uh, definitely not. Uh, nor does break, uh, break clean, but, uh, grease right off your hands though. It sure will. It sure will. And 10 years off your life while doing so. No, so uh, I got about eight minutes left. Okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> we better wrap uh, this up. Toys about to pass. Too much carb cleaner. Yeah. Too much carb cleaner. Uh, JB Weld. Ah, uh, the old JB Weld. Um, you know, good for good for quick trail repairs. Uh, Have you guys lock- ever used JB Weld or been around anybody who's used JB Weld on the trail? Not I've on only the seen trail. JB Weld give people false hope. Right. I will say that I use a product called from Loctite. Uh, it's called, I have it right over here on my shelf called um, uh, High Saw 1C. It's an industrial uh, version. I have fixed uh, keyways on crankshafts uh, with them before. It's, uh, it's a pretty amazing product. Something that does take a while to cure. So I'm not real sure. I have tried some JB Weld product on an engine block that had cracked. Uh, but uh, it didn't hold pressure. It would definitely have gotten you off. It was their steel putty or whatever they call it. It would have definitely gotten you off the trail though. So that's good. Uh, Gasket maker, same kind of thing. Got a leaky diff or something like that. I don't think I've ever seen anybody use Permatex ultra black gasket maker on the trail for anything personally, but uh, probably not a bad thing to have, you know. Doesn't take up much space. Nope. Doesn't lasts, take, and that's, lasts forever. Yeah, and most of this stuff here generally doesn't yeah. take up too much space. But I know I always the the engine oil thing is is definitely something I always have with me. Yeah. Well, that this is the fun category, the miscellaneous um, category, because mm. there's so many miscellaneous things you can throw into a uh, into a junk bag or whatever. It's like the junk drawer of your house. This is true. Full of the miscellaneous stuff. You know, so you got I, I zip know... ties. Oh, yeah. go ahead. Oh, no, nothing. So I'm looking at the show notes and I think I literally have, I think I literally carry almost every single one of these things with me. <laughs> yeah. So we got zip ties, duct tape, and bailing wire, which should be like the the, the foundation of, of every good kit, right? The holy trinity Tr- of, of trail repair kits. With those three things and a crescent wrench, you could really just wipe off the rest Cres- of the list, a crescent, honestly. A crescent hammer. <laughs> Crescent hammer, yeah. Multi-function crescent hammer, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Travis says that carb cleaner or brake cleaner can reset a tire bead in a pinch. Also, oh, good point. Good I've point. Been there and done that. It it does work. A couple can years someone ago, tell they... me what a tell me what a spud wrench is. That's a wrench that shoots potatoes. That's what I thought. Uh, the, it's <laughs> like a, for potatoes. I know there's a. Uh, it's it's a adjustable wrench, crescent wrench, whatever you want to call it, that they make now. But it also on one end, takes oh. sockets. So, well, uh, they really seem super awesome, but they're not. It looks like this. The spud wrenches I'm looking at is it looks like a crescent wrench on one end, and then something to kill zombies or something like that. A, it's a big metal spike at the end. So what? Uh, what a spud wrench is technically for that metal spike is like uh, iron workers use them. So when you're lining up two holes. <sighs> You stick mm-hmm. that metal spike in there. Uh, I don't think he actually means spud wrench, though. I think he just means crescent wrench. 
Oh, got it. Kevin here says that he carries trans fluid and will work as power steering, gas tank repair, water, and some brake fluid. And of course, zip ties, duct tape, and bailing wire and pantyhose for makeshift belt and nose repair. I didn't know that tranny fluid could work for all those things. And I've never Either heard of somebody missed... carrying pantyhose, but that's just me. <laughs> well, you haven't gone wheeling with our crew very much, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, thought... I'm a kind of a la eggs person myself, so. <laughs> la eggs. <laughs> oh, my goodness. You shouldn't even know that. Oh, I shouldn't even know I'm, that. I'm you, went, you went way back. Like, it makes yeah. sense that you're into 90s cars if you had that joke chambered. That was Some deep. of us are still living there, let me tell you. So. Yeah. yeah. Do you sure. just look up, like, retro commercials on YouTube and just play them so that you are back with the times? <laughs> Sometimes, sometimes. Yeah, what happened in the trail state? If you break a belt, I have never heard of that. Uh, because... I think I think it only works if you have a vehicle with under fifty torque, like a Volkswagen Beetle or a Van again or something. And I'm also oh. almost certain that this doesn't work with serpentine belts. I, I'm not saying it's impossible, <laughs> right? I'm exactly. saying it's improbable. V so V I'd belt like, you know, only wrong. Do you know how badly I want to start looking up videos about people using pantyhose for belts now <laughs> on cars? Make sure you turn on your safe search. Safe search. Don't do say, it on the I'm work computer. I'm just going to take a pair of pantyhose and tie them around my way, take a picture, and send it to you. <laughs> Works as a belt. Delete, delete, delete. <laughs> All right. So back to the miscellaneous. So duct tape, zip ties, bailing wire, yes. um, lug nut key. Don't forget your lug nut key. Otherwise, you're using that cold chisel to get your, your <laughs> lug nut off if you got to oh. change it. Or you're trying to de-beat a tire while it's still bolted to your uh, vehicle. That doesn't you sound just like just pull out all your sockets, see which ones you can beat over a lug nut. <laughs> which one you can and, hammer uh, on. You're going to need yeah. five similarly, similarly sized ones. <laughs> That's going to be tough. Um, it, or you could just carry a lug nut key, uh, bottle jack, Colby valves, a tire repair kit. Um, let's see here. A thread repair tool. So this one, this one I'm super proud of. I asked for this for Christmas a bunch of years ago and got it. And wow. most people have never seen it before. So I haven't. you've got a you got a damaged bolt and you need to chase those threads. You just slip it into this tool. This tool is called the thread mate. I got it from, or my wife got it from Duluth trading company. Um, and you just crank that knob down until it's mostly tight around the bolt. And those two, two cutting teeth are sloppy enough left and right that they will plop into just about any thread. And, uh, you can hmm. spin your bolt in and out of that and chase the threads clean and, and, maybe good enough to get it back in have you used it yet i have several times yes sir okay and a ringing in fact, endorsement the, in fact the year that uh the year i asked for it for christmas um shortly before christmas i was fixing something that was broken on my subaru and i'm like hey babe i know i asked for this for christmas did you get it for me for Christmas? Because I could really use it in the garage <laughs> right now. You don't even have to wrap it. I need that tool right now. She wow. said, no, I didn't get that. Ah. So, yeah. Hmm. Uh, so, yeah, that's like, a thread repair tool. I like hmm. Dakota Todd's comment here. Uh, mule tape. Yes. Oh, yeah. Mule tape, or also known as flat rope. It's the rope that's flat. Um, it says it's handy to bring thin flat rope. It's normally rated for 2,500 brake strength, endless uses. I get lots of it from work for free. I also get lots of leftover reels from work for free as well. <laughs> yes. Yes. I, I, I uh, you know, on that, on that note on mule tape, I carry a, I can't remember the name of it, but it's a high pressure tape. It's, it's not very wide. But it'll go. You can wrap it around um, radiator hoses and stuff like that, and it's pressure rated. All that stuff. So just As in case I spring a leak. I, yeah. I also carry some of that. The stuff I have is an inch and a half or so wide, and it kind of it's like a rubberized, and it only sticks to itself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's that stuff yeah. is uh, handy. How about a uh, oil spill kit? Do you guys carry an oil spill kit with you? I I do have a shovel. Yes. Yes, I, I have, uh, I have, I carry cat, what are they, puppy pads, you know, like, uh, 
yeah, yeah. it's like uh put put under the thing so pig pig mat some people call it pig mat or maybe it's a brand pig mat but it's an absorbent uh cloth for that purpose right mm-hmm. uh well this one here is made by a company called poly performance it's not very big it's about the size of a first aid kit a boo-boo first aid kit and it's got most of the things in it. i think it's only like 26 bucks so that's the and brand honestly, that I, I believe most off-road parks now technically require you to carry one of those i don't know if you're gonna get yes. checked but that is in the rules that you're supposed to have a spoke kit. and some clubs require you if you're going on runs with them to have these for the runs after you've left yeah. taco bell um <laughs> airline fittings here we go here's an arb airline fitting kit um Jeremy could have used this on our snow run. I had one, but it was back at my house, not with me. So he did not get to uh, bring it. Uh, Brent says Dakota's sleeping bag absorbs oil just fine. <laughs> oil spill. You mean, you must mean dust control. Yes, it definitely is a dust control. Uh, hose clamps. In case you break one of these guys, they're, they're, they're very big. You could throw some of those in um random steel for welding if you've got a welder with you and you don't want to use your wrenches Mm -hmm. um just throw in a couple chunks of um mild steel let's see here a luma seal radiator sealant i hadn't thought about this one at all but it kind of makes sense you get a puncture you uh we're hot dogging it. You went off the trail. You crashed some trees. You got a branch through your radiator. Maybe you need some Aluma Seal. Or you get the uh, fire resistant, great stuff, expanding foam. <laughs> send it. <laughs> spray it into your radiator. They're also, well, you spray it on the outside where the hole is. You leave the stick right around it <laughs> and uh, shoot the can when you're done. It's fun. Big boom. Shoot the can when you're done. <laughs> Throw it in the fire when nobody's looking. How about road flares? You guys carry road flares? I do. I've got, uh, this is kind of weird, but uh, uh, actually, I guess it's not that weird, but uh, the, our JDM vehicles had road flares that came with the cars. Uh, oh, wow. Yeah. I don't know. But How's that legal? I don't know. But anyway, uh, it had one. And then, uh, but we've ever since, we 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 always had one or two with us. Uh when we did the Alcan 5000, I think you were required to carry one or two, if I remember correctly, just in case. So, and then there are those, the LED road flares. Uh, yes. Yeah. So I, I do carry a road flare. It is a marine road flare. Well, not road flare, but so it's, they're plastic <laughs> with like a screw on cap, but uh, they're marine rated. So they're water, they last a lot longer and they don't turn into white chalk in your glove box. And I actually uh, don't, carry it so much for the actual like slow down and don't hit me i always carry flares because if you've ever tried to start a fire in the winter time in the woods uh nothing really works better than a road flare except for maybe a five gallon can, can of gas yeah uh, but they, yeah you can you can get a lot of wet wood to burn with a road flare they're quite impressive mm-hmm. at starting fires yeah i think i've uh actually one of my camp trips the one trip where we took the two lmtvs to the backside of mount st helens um and we also brought a hot tub with us um the guy who came with me brought a crate of old road flares and we lit three quarters of the crate on fire at the same time while we were in the hot tub and it was at nighttime and it was just the brightest red it was it was crazy it was my brother took apart a bunch of road flares and then made it into one super road flare and like a magnum (laughs) beer can (laughs) which he gave to me and i immediately set off at night uh it was so bright you could hold your hand up then like walk the fire and like see bones in your fingers and stuff (laughs) (laughs) that That is wildly impressive (laughs) all right so i gotta talk to so my buddy christian who is a volunteer firefighter gets like the old road flares. so i gotta talk to him see if he can get me some road flares we're gonna need to make another magnum one that sounds like a good time um to finish off this category we got gloves hand wipes if if you get dirty and a ground tarp it is no fun crawling under a rig in the nasty nasty mud or whatever you're stuck in so i have a product 
I have a product called a Trail Creeper, and uh, yeah. um, it's a, it folds up fairly about this big, about that thick. It's foam, easy to use. So, anyway, I've also been given the nickname the Trail Creeper every now and then. But anyway, so <laughs> yeah, having something, especially if you ever have to do a trail fix in snow. Yes, just the tarp will make such a difference. There was a, a slightly damning photo that my wife took of me when my buddy Martin and I were out towards Bend, and I had to get under the van. And we, the only thing we had was this like polka dot beach blanket thing. And so, like, I'm underneath, <laughs> I'm underneath this thing, like wrenching on something, but I'm on this like hot pink beach blanket. So, anyway, awesome. So you and your buddy Martin got under the van with a polka yeah. dot beach blanket. I'd rather not talk about it. But anyway, sounds like an interesting so, story. I'm going to throw another plug for Harbor Freight. Sometimes they got those tarps for free. So free tarp. And they're they're not huge. They're only like four by six or something, but that's plenty big to uh, a twister mat. Is that what you carry, Brent, is a twister mat for when you work on rigs? <laughs> <laughs> that would be so awesome to pull I, out a twister mat. It I would might be. actually do that now. Oh, Just keep I love going. It. Going to Goodwill and looking for a twister mat. I mean, you just fake like you break down just so you can pull that thing out. <laughs> <laughs> I guarantee I you, you don't need to bring the spinner. There's an app for that. So. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there probably is. All right, Coy, let's talk about expensive stuff. What expensive yeah, my, stuff you got for list here? Stuff. A ready welder. Those are expensive, and they take oh. up a decent amount of room. I think they're pretty awesome. I, I've Have been you told ever used one? I never have, and I've been told that if you take jumper cables and two batteries, you can uh, weld with, with like jumper cables and welding rod. I've never done yeah. it, but I actually would like to just test it out sometime. And then we also have battery or air-powered tools, also expensive. I do bring some of those on occasion, depending on how far I'm going and what I'm doing, but impact gun, chisel, ratchet, uh i'll bring a drill sometimes just because they're handy more around camp than anything but yeah uh saws off you don't have a chainsaw and a nice pruning bit for it can actually move a lot of wood so there's a lot of handy reasons to bring that and also most of these companies that make these you know electric tools make a very nice light that those clip into i have a yeah kind of a wide angle led light rigid is what i have but uh, yeah. I use that working on my cars and trucks in the shop and I bring that camping. It's great around camp mm-hmm. and doubles as if you're laying under your truck, having some light, uh, an air compressor or a pro Eagle Jack who doesn't want one of those. So I, I put both- air, comp- I put the air compressor on here specifically. I picked the ARB twin suitcase one that has the, I think it's a one gallon tank. Because if you're going to run air tools, you got to have some sort of reservoir for the air to build up and for it to work. Dakota Todd says an electric impact is a must. Actually, that's a good point. I'm not sure if this is what he's referring to or not, but you can get 12 volt corded impact guns as well. So it plugs Uh, into your cigarette outlet. I mean, also a power tank could could be said instead of an air compressor because those probably run uh, air tools better than most air compressors. absolutely absolutely I, uh, would. I have a pro eagle jack and i love the thing but i yeah. i do not have the room to bring one with me they're they're kind of big on their own but uh they it are be, they are pretty yeah. awesome but uh i suppose if you had like a trophy truck or something larger you could you know they make the version without the wheels and it's just got the skid on the bottom i've seen some people that you know put them in the bed of their trucks have a mount for them and all that stuff but uh i i will say that uh uh, that's the best way to 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 jack the truck up uh and i i have bottle jacks and especially off road you're just like oh boy am i gonna am i gonna lose a limb today doing this or what but uh, another one that's kind of doubles as a tool and sometimes a recovery item set of little wheel chocks uh oh yeah hurt. i i don't always carry wheel chocks uh but occasionally i have when i know i'm gonna be doing some intense winching and if you're working on your vehicle obviously wheel chocks can be a lifesaver that's a great suggestion we used my uh milwaukee 
18 volt impact gun. In fact, it's the one in this picture right here. The mid torque is what they call it. It only goes to like 650 foot pounds. So it's not a ton of torque, um, more torque than any bolt on your vehicle would ever need. Mm -hmm. But, uh, we use that to change the, uh, axle out on the front of my frontier. And I got to say, we did it in 45 or 50 minutes in a parking lot. And I was super excited with how quick that was. Uh, Dakota Todd says, seems a bit frivolous, the Pro Eagle. I do agree. I was looking up the uh, pricing on them when I was doing the research for this. And uh, I was like, oh, man, sweet, 160 bucks for Pro Eagle? I didn't know they were that cheap. And the 160 bucks was actually this like aluminum mounting bracket <laughs> for the Pro Eagle for your vehicle. <laughs> so the Pro Eagles are like 600, 550 or 600 bucks or something for their for their big guy. And if you've got an extra 150 laying around, you can get the sweet aluminum bracket to put it in on your rig. Well, that's the I, other thing is like I, I bought the Pro Eagle. I got it. I got it for a deal at, at Jeep Safari one year. And nice. I don't take it with me, but it's, you know, I just I was done using a regular jack with like wood stacked up onto it to lift up my four by fours. It's just like it got super sketchy one day. I'm like, you know what? Fine. I'm, I'm just doing it. I have a, I have say a safe jack as well. Um, unfortunately for me, the safe jack is either always too big or too small. Like it's probably just the vehicles that I own, but I, I can't use a safe jack with any of the attachments. It seems like, because it's then too have, big to get under the vehicle. Well, you must have a mid-size vehicle instead of a full size or a small vehicle. You must have mid-size vehicles where it's too big or too small for you. It, it, yeah. I mean, it's a, you know, it's a Mitsubishi Pajero or Montero on 33s with a, you know, inch and a half, two inch lift. So it's not like a Jeep on 40s. And at the same mm. time, it's, I, I can get it under the rear diff, but I can get a regular bottle jack under the rear diff too. So anyway, I'm, I still hold on to it because I, someday I, I know I'll be able to use it for something, but. And it's well, I think I think Andy knows. You just run your winch line up into a tree, just get the whole front end off the ground, totally safe, and just crawl under there and do your work. Uh, uh, you Peace know, the lawyers, they just love it. They just love as it. long as you're using a tree strap, what does it matter? Yeah, that's what, what is for, it for, right? Yes, why would right. they make a tree strap if you weren't supposed to lift your vehicle up with a tree? Yeah, that's, that's why do you think why they call it a the, tree strap. Yeah. That's why I use the epic hook for doing epic recoveries <laughs> and <laughs> <For> epic things. <laughs> epic. That's right. That's right. Also, epic fails. When my yeah, epic, yeah. Epic injuries. So, anyway. <laughs> All right. Um, let's talk about what we stick our tools in. So, they make uh, yeah. like roll pouches. Yes. I'm a big um, fan of the roll. Uh, I have a tool roll uh, from Amer uh, from a, 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 was it American Adventure Tool Company, Adventure Tool Company, and it's waxed canvas. And it, if when you first get it, you're like, this smells like awesome. And then about an hour <laughs> later, you're like, oh my god, is this thing done off gassing? But it oh, is overpowering me. Yes, but I, I'm a big fan of the tool roll. They're compact. They're pretty lightweight. You can stuff them in the in the back of your truck pretty easily so that's my new love lander scent it's gonna be tool roll <laughs> the smell of freshly waxed canvas i i personally don't use a tool roll i see the value in them it seems like your tools would make a lot less noise i i found a toolbox that fit right perfect with my drawer slide and the same height and everything so it makes it all level uh, but when you hit bumps, you can't hear all my tools. Ka-ching, ka-chang. Tool, tool rolls kind of take care of that. So here's, here is another version of a tool roll where you individually nest each tool into it. Um, I don't feel like this is a good representation. This is a small one. I thought I had one uploaded. So this is the first thing I could grab as we're talking live here. But um, my tools make a lot less noise when they're in these bags, in these roll-ups, and then they are in a soft-sided tool bag itself. Yes. I do like the fact that when I had, when I used to carry my tools in a, in a traditional, generally a, a, a plastic tool box, you can, you can ratchet it down and, you know, and it really just keep it real sturdy. I mean, you can do that with the tool roll too, but for what I generally do, I generally prefer the tool roll. Yeah, there's Dakota definitely Dakota advantage Todd, having the go ahead. Dakota Todd says that Milwaukee pack out boxes for all the things. If you guys haven't seen this 
pack out boxes and crates and all the stuff that Milwaukee's coming out with. You should check it out. They're phenomenal. They're costly, um, but they're really, really sweet. In the trade that I'm in, you'll see other contractors and they have their vans just lined wall to wall, floor to ceiling with these pack out boxes. And they're so organized. I think it's super cool, but it costs a lot of money to, to run stuff like that. See, I've got and just at my at my house, I have four toolboxes and they don't nest or stack. And I've been looking at those those pack out boxes or whatever they're called, because um, it would be a good way to have all those toolboxes like in one spot. So and the nice thing about keeping your rolls or, or even if you're just carrying your tools loose in a toolbox, if you have a like, say, an SUV and you're stacking everything in there, uh, you can stack squares, but circles don't stack quite as well with the roll so there's some See, i've got to that. i got the small children so this goes where their feet would be if they were 10 years older than they are right behind the seat easy to grab if things aren't piled up super deep in there the, the other reason i haven't switched to a roll is my toolbox while it's a chintzy cheap plastic one the lid of it actually opens up and it's kind of a tackle box looking situation that's where mm-hmm. all my electrical connectors are and then you open it up and inside is just the standard toolbox. Well, that's kind of a cool one. Yeah. yeah. So I, um, I, as I was researching, Craftsman makes a plastic version of like their metal version. So, and I have that version right there. That's one of the, of of the three or four toolboxes I have. That's the one that I have right there. Yeah. That one but doubles it's heavy. As, yeah, it doubles to hold your tools and also can be a murder weapon. Yes. Oh, great for ballast. <laughs> <laughs> yes you need yeah. to sink something to the bottom of a lake or something like that mm-hmm. if you're not quite over that gvwr yet just get one of those suckers yeah exactly and the thing about those is they're so cheap that don't worry they, there's no ball bearings in those drawers they just slide metal on metal <laughs> yeah. Yeah. the good news is if you slide them fast enough they create enough heat you can start a fire so <laughs> and if they get beat up too much the drawers do not open or or will open cockeyed and you're fighting those drawers yeah i especially love when you put a tool in there and then you close it and it rolls and moves a little bit but then locks the drawer closed (laughs) (laughs) you end up just picking the whole Uh, thing up and shaking uh, it while the tools fall out yeah yeah yeah. that one stays at home that never goes out on the trail ever so yeah um andy can you talk spare parts yeah, sure. So uh, we've got things, uh, spare parts. How much do you bring? Uh, radiator hoses is one. Uh, it's not something I bring. It's something I have had to replace on the road because uh, I had a Jeep Cherokee that uh, the radiator conked out and I needed to buy some, but something some people do bring. Belts, that is something, uh, depending on how far out I'm going and how long away, how long. Okay, let me rephrase this. That uh, it's something I bring depending on how long I'm going to be gone or how far out I'm going. And uh, so your know, alternator power steering, uh, my, my four wheel drives have two alternator belts, power steering and air conditioning. Uh, so I carry some belts, U joints. That's another thing that you can, you can bring. Uh, axles. I know uh, some people do bring trail spare axles especially if you're out there wheeling hard like Aaron, uh, you know, it's a bring it, bring thing it. some of you might not understand. Yeah. <laughs> uh, fuel line. Uh, that's something you can bring. It can be multi-functional. like that rubber, like the ru- yeah, rubber fuel line mm-hmm. might be multifunctional. Mm-hmm. You could use it as a vacuum line. Maybe. Yeah. One Brake that line. Has saved me on two occasions. Uh, Keep a handful of kind of appropriate random size nuts, bolts, and washers in your toolbox. They can just yes. bounce around on the bottom there, but uh, man, they, they will save you at some point or save oh, somebody yeah. with just to have just a you know a nice big handful of random nuts, bolts, and washers. Yes. You know, if you have a metric vehicle, then make sure they're metric and so on. So yeah, forth. But, yeah, yeah, for sure. But, I think that's a I think that's a really good idea. I know I I have a random assortment of that stuff. Um, Brake lines? That's not something I've ever brought with me, but... I threw brake lines on there. Maybe, Mm -hmm. like, you upgraded or changed some out or something, and... Okay, fair enough. Maybe you could throw your old ones in. 
because and maybe I'm not wheeling like this, but there might be somebody who flexes out so much they tear one off because their limit strap broke or something silly like that. I don't know. There are a few there are a few instances where you know you've made modifications to your rig that are really specific and carrying another one just in case you break it because you know O'Reilly isn't going to carry it. Uh, one of the, a Facebook user here, I'm not sure who it is, said a spare key. That is something yeah. that I've gotten into the habit of doing too. Is especially if we're going out somewhere long ways away, is I can just like you know you get out there and you're like oh my god I can't find the key and now I'm stuck here in the middle of nowhere. Um, Leaf I've spring never, U-bolts. Go ahead. I've never actually lost a key while I'm out Me wheeling. Me neither. My knock, wife is on one wood. of these kind of people that when I'm wheeling, I just leave the key in it. You stop, I leave the key in it. That way it never gets out and never gets lost because the key is in the ignition. Yeah. My wife thinks that it'll get stolen if the key's in the ignition. Even if you just yeah. pull apart well, it in the wind. Of course it will. You're 200 miles from nowhere. Yeah, you so don't know who's around the bush. She often true. will pull the key out and then put it in her pocket course without telling me so then i i jump back in and then i'm frantically searching my yes. pocket and i start losing my mind thinking i dropped a key <laughs> it's happened more than once yes um brent also by the way mentions another thing that i always bring with me which is ratchet straps i always have at least one ratchet strap with me just in case i've seen i've seen them used and employed in a variety of situations that i never would have thought of one time coming back from arizona a buddy's uh, swing away spare tire uh, carrier latch broke. Mm. So the uh, ratchet strap came in, came in well, uh, came in useful there. Uh, another clutch. thing. Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, another, uh, another thing we got on the list here is uh, leaf spring U bolts. I don't uh, know. I read that one in some other thing. I just, I put that in there. Maybe once again, some hardcore wheelers are breaking these when they are, rock bouncing or something right i don't know yeah i don't know um Rhett, or Coy you live talk- in a salt belt yeah maybe uh Coy talked about the random hardware i think that that's a that's a really good idea i see we have heim joints on here if you've got heim joints a heim joint thing going on then uh, maybe do they break a bad idea. they do they do okay they do all right well that's our uh, that's our list. Uh, going back through the comments, um, it looks like we covered almost everything that people were mentioning here, um, except for early on there was like a Leatherman type type tool mentioned early on. Let's see here. I Talk I carry Leatherman in all uh, with me whenever we go out. It's just they've got super sharp knives, super sharp saws, flyers, mm, yeah. just in case I guess my in case my tool roll fell out of the back of the vehicle i don't know well, and the thing about out. having a good multi-tool is like most of your regular hand tools won't really give you the kind of intense blood blister that a good multi-tool <laughs> can and i yes. always like to just Absolutely. when i start working on a rig just yeah. really pinch the daylights out of something and just throw myself into a screaming fit before I really get down and fix it. So yeah. Well, you yeah, you agree. really want to hurt your hand, the one that you need to yeah. use to work on your vehicle. Well, because it can only get better from there. Mm-hmm. So you yeah. gotta you gotta set the bar and then go yeah. up. Mm-hmm. Uh Brent also mentioned that he uses resettable fuses. So he says he almost ran out of 15 amp fuses, troubleshooting a vehicle on a trail for someone. Um, I have run out of fuses. Uh, back in the uh, endurance racing race car days, um, we had a pinched wire, and the only way to find out what wire was pinched was to keep putting the fuses in it, and then we ran out. So, mm. if you're a boss, you just have a nice little piece of tin foil folded up in your truck, and if you have something old enough for bus fuses, a 22 shell that has been fired is near perfect, and I wouldn't say it's resettable, but it's almost unblowable. So. <laughs> <laughs> you'll find um, out where the, you'll find out where the short is eventually <laughs> yeah from the smoke yeah well last thing to go over here is we've got some ready-made kits um that i just threw in the show notes we're running real long so i'm not going to cover these really much but we've got we run the gamut from some harbor freight ones for 40 bucks to a gear wrench one that is um four thousand four hundred dollars that is an impressive set quite a bit more what's crazy is it only has less than double the amount of pieces 
So I mean, if you the have forty the dollar one, it's hundred thirty bucks. Four thousand dollar tool right. set pieces. Couldn't you just buy another trail rig? Just leave yours. <laughs> just tow it behind I your other rig. This is probably what somebody would be buying, and it's in their chase truck or something like that. So, yeah. And honestly, these are just are, random ones. Yeah, these are all. And these great. are. These are all like super basic though. They're sockets, ratchets, wrenches, a couple screwdrivers, a couple pliers, maybe a hammer. There's not a whole lot going on in these kits. Even the 243 piece cobalt kit for 150 bucks. Um, you there's you need to supplement these quite a bit. And I don't know about you guys, but it, at least with my rigs. I, it's generally like four sizes and I can disassemble yeah. like 90% of the car. So I try to put together my own toolkit. I'm leaving the, I'm leaving some of these wrenches at home. Cause I just, I know I'm not going to need, you know, some of this stuff very, or very unlikely. So I try to keep the, the tools to a minimum. Cause I don't want to bring my entire rolling tool chest of stuff with me onto the trail. You don't have uh, all 450 pounds of tools and gear oils. I listed. You, you know, don't keep uh, enough oil for a full oil change? Uh, sometimes? No. no. <laughs> Andy makes a great point on that. If you, Especially if you work on your vehicle at your house, you'll quickly figure out, I mean, Toyota, it's like I need a 10 mil, I need a 12 mil, I need a 14, a 17, and was it 19 yep. or something. 19, and then, yeah. you know, you get a deep one of those, you get a gear wrench of those. You can throw some other stuff in, but, I mean, for those four, you can – just about take the entire vehicle apart though yeah just yeah. a couple others you start changing you know you know things with cv shafts are prone those are so you change one or two of those you'll know what you need to change those and you kind of customize your toolbox and uh you know you, you don't necessarily need a full kit of every single a complete socket set and deep well sure. and you'll know what you need yeah. if you do your own maintenance and stuff pretty quickly yeah you're leaving the 238 piece at home so yeah Yep. Um, and I, I forgot to mention at the, uh, the beginning of the main topic here, but I made a video, uh, with another YouTuber a couple years ago, probably three years ago, um, going through my personal, um, trail tool bag setup. So if you go to our YouTube page and it's also in the show notes here, if you go to the YouTube page and look up the video, um, unfortunately it, it's titled recovery tools and I don't know why it's called titled recovery tools. So you, the topic may trick you, but if you click the video and you see the giant LM TV driving towards you at the very beginning of the video, it's the right one. So make sure you go check that out on our YouTube page. And maybe I'll list a link to that in our uh, podcast, um, Facebook page and stuff like that come up in the coming week. So you guys can find that out. So Anything, anything else? I thought I did think of a, another couple things, nut drivers. So I keep a couple nut drivers and they are the standard size for the hose clamps. It's like five sixteenths and three eighths, I believe. So in case you got to tighten or loosen hose clamps or something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm just trying to think if there's anything else in my toolkit that I, you know, I just, I mean, the basics are a couple of screwdrivers ratchet, the right sockets, a uh, couple sets of pliers. I carry a couple of sets of rubber gloves. Um, I, I do carry a, uh, I'll tell you one thing I do carry is a metal punch, uh, which can become, which can come real handy. Like if I know the front shocks on, on my rigs, uh, sometimes those bolts can be really hard to get out and just a punch and a <laughs> screwdriver, or excuse me, a punch and a hammer. Uh, a hammer too, I didn't even see a hammer, but like you gotta carry a hammer. So. Yeah. Absolutely. Yep. The the only thing I can think of that really wasn't recovered, I keep a nice good roll of electrical tape oh, in there. It's not absolutely it's not duct tape, but man, I I had a nut come off a suspension bolt and it was all being held, but I didn't have a nut to fix it. And man, I wrapped that as tight as I could with about an <laughs> inch of electrical tape, and I drove like seventy miles home. So, it you know it'll uh it'll it'll save you once in a while yeah nice yeah i will say well, uh, one of the, oh, go ahead. nope i but was just gonna finish up one other thing uh vice grip like uh, if your brakes go out you can 
vice grip under that. Uh, I was out in the middle of Death Valley, ran across a woman with a, a Cherokee with a who was having brake problems, and that uh, that that vice grip plier that she had, uh, locking pliers helped. So, mm-hmm. okay, you can you can close the show. Down. We can close close the show out. So we do want to thank everybody for listening to us weekly. Thanks for tuning in and hanging out with us. This is one of the most listener shows that we've had possibly ever. So maybe not having Jeremy and Ben is a good thing. Maybe you guys are my new co-hosts here. <laughs> well, just, I mean, <laughs> just got to get you a new microphone. It's all Andy. Okay, I'm not well, saying that Andy and I are the best co-hosts. I'm just saying the listeners are saying that <clears throat> the listeners are saying that <laughs> the people well, have know. spoken. Let us know right into us. Let us know if we should fire Ben and bring on Coy or Andy. Just let us know right to us. It won't hurt any feelings. <laughs> oh, shoot. Ben is listening. He says, screw you. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Ben, you'll still be here behind the scenes editing. Don't worry. We still need a tough guy. <laughs> like, you'll still be part of the show. No, Ben has to be. Ben has to be part of the show because, I mean, he's. He does provide a lot of content. He, yeah. he provides a lot of content. Absolutely, he does. So, yeah. So, we do appreciate you guys out there. Make sure you're sharing us with your friends and uh, your neighbors and um, Aunt Edith. She probably needs something to do anyways. Hook her up into podcasting. She'll love us. Um, God bless America. Don't forget to visit Patriot Patch and join the Patch of the Month Club. Check out our Gaia affiliate link for up to 40% off. Also, don't forget to head over to Warren Medical Gear Outfitters and Colby Valve to see all their great gear. We are a proud part of the Firearms Radio Network. Got a comment or question? Send it to us through our webpage at firearmsradio.net or through our social media channels by searching for Off-Road Podcast. Also, you can listen to us live at overlandradio.com Mondays at 7 p.m. Pacific. When off-road, please remember to have fun, tread lightly, be safe, and courteous. Thanks for listening. And we want to give a big... Go ahead. People have spoken. We got to fire Ben. So Andy, you and me got a Rochambeau for who learns how to edit. Oh, 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 I forfeit.